Okay. Friends, I do want to announce that on Sunday, August 22nd, we are going to have a brief, hopefully brief, congregational meeting after worship, a special congregational meeting to talk more about our sidewalk project. So we have our sidewalk task force, which so far is me, Barb, and Pat. Um, and we've got three bids that we've been looking at in detail and have one that we want to recommend to the congregation. We also have some fundraising ideas that we want to share with you as well. Um, so we hope that you can stay after worship on the 22nd um, to hear more about this project and to vote to support um, the particular contractor that the sidewalk task force is going to recommend to you. Um, so we hope that we will see you then. Today, after worship, you are invited to head out to the lawn on the east side. We are going to have our second Sunday social. We've got snack, snacks out there for you, along with some drinks. We've got tables and chairs set up. Uh, it'll be some time to just be in fellowship and catch up with one another. And then at noon today, our young adult group is heading to the Irvington Farmer's Market. It's one of my favorite things to do in the summer. We are hoping to grab some lunch and just enjoy the vendors who are there. But everyone in the congregation is welcome to join us. So if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to answer them, especially because there is all kinds of construction going on in Irvington, and it might be a little tricky to get to Ellenberger Park today, um, but I can help guide you there. Monday, our strategic plan task force is meeting to continue working at writing our strategic plan. Wednesday, our worship team is meeting, and Thursday, our care team is meeting. And next Sunday, our council finance team is meeting to start looking at the budget as we prepare for our October congregational meeting. I do want to lift up a word of thanks to everyone who donated to our back to school supply drive. I've got everything listed on the screen somewhere in those slides for what it was that we collected. Um, but Megan was so incredibly grateful for the generosity of our congregation. She had several students who showed up whose families just were not able to get them any school supplies. And so you all really made a difference in their lives as they got this school year started. So thank you to everyone who donated. On Thursday as well, our care team is doing another round of porch visits. They had an absolutely amazing time this past Friday at Carolyn Van Dyke's. We had a great group for that one. Um, and this Thursday, folks are heading to Jenny Blue's house, then going to lunch, and then going to see Carol Powell. Um, if you have any questions about those porch visits, do see Barb or Becky, and they can get you some more information. And last announcement, uh, we also had a great group this past Thursday working on our coloring books for Riley Children's Hospital. Like I said last Sunday, we got them stocked up with almost 30,000 crayons, and now the kids need something to color. So, we are working at putting together 1,000 coloring books for Riley Children's Hospital. Um, on August 17th at 6.30, that's a Tuesday, folks are going to get together again to continue assembling those coloring books. We'd love for you to join us. And those are all the announcements that I have for you this morning. Friends, let us worship God as Martha plays our prelude. Today, it's great it is thy faithfulness.
friends, as one body of Christ, we gather together this day. Blessed by one spirit, we gather in unity and love. I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer as we turn to God this morning. Let us pray. Speak truth to us this day, O God. Speak truth to the innermost parts of our hearts and our minds that we might speak your truth in love and that you might speak your truth through us each and every day. God, we give you thanks that you have indeed brought us together as one body in Christ this morning, one body with many parts, one body with many unique individuals whom you have gifted with many talents and abilities. God, we give you thanks that you bring us together to do your work in this world, to serve you in your ministry as you call us to serve and enrich the community around us. God, pour out your spirit upon our worship this day that it might offer to us the strength and the nourishment that we need to root ourselves more deeply in the love of Christ. God, as we gather this morning, you know all of those things that are on our hearts. You know those people our hearts are reaching out to, those places, those concerns that we have, those joys that lift up our hearts in excitement. God, in these moments, we ask that you hear the prayers of our hearts, whatever they might be. God, for those in our church family who are facing health concerns whom we lifted up earlier today, God, we pray that you surround them with a spirit of encouragement and care. We pray that they might know of your love and your support, that they might find in you peace and patience, and that they might know the love of their church family. God, we pray for this world that we live in as well as we continue to battle this pandemic that is ravaging so many lives. God, for your guidance, for your compassion, and for your care, we pray. God, we give you thanks that you have brought us together to serve you and to serve one another. May our worship this day strengthen us for the journey ahead. Together, we pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We continue on in our study of Ephesians, and today we are looking at chapter 4, verses 1 through 16. Hear this good news. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended into the lower parts of the earth? 
He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and their deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knitted together by every ligament which is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. May we be blessed by the reading and the hearing of God's word. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that you have called each and every one of us according to the gifts that you have given us. You have gifted each and every one of us with an ability to love our neighbor and to love you. God, in this time of study, we pray that this might be a time when we can build up together the body of Christ when we can grow together in our faith and in our service to you. God, I pray that the words of your servant are ever faithful this day. Amen. So the big thing going on in my family right now is my niece. <laughs> like everything in our lives revolves around this tiny human right now. My new favorite hobby, I told some of you, is holding that baby. And this baby has now anointed every member of our family with spit up and drool and we would not have it any other way. My Facebook is church stuff and baby pictures. I'm amazed too because every time I go to see her, she has grown. She is changing right before my very eyes. Right now, she's just a little over a month old, but she's starting to be a little more awake and alert. She's starting to take in the light and the shadow and the shapes around her. She sticks out her tongue and she makes the cutest faces I've ever seen, and I could just stare at her for hours. When I look at this tiny little human, I know that within her is so much possibility. I know that as she continues to get bigger and begins to explore this world, she's going to start figure, figuring out things that are fun and bring her joy and make her laugh. Her personality is going to begin blossoming. She's going to start discovering bit by bit all these things that she can do. She'll probably go through some challenges and struggles in her life and will hopefully learn from those. And as she grows and matures, she'll uncover through some trial and error what her particular and unique gifts and talents are. And hopefully one day she'll get to discern her meaning and purpose in this life that will leave her feeling fulfilled as she uses those gifts and talents she has to help make the world a little better and a little brighter. When I look at this tiny little human, I see the miracle that is life. And even if I can't get enough of her as this tiny little baby, I am so excited to watch her life unfold. Always 
our lives are unfolding. And I hope we're always growing. It may not be as apparent as a quickly growing baby, but internally we have these opportunities to grow in our personhood and in our faith. We're constantly gaining these new experiences and insight into life, and in our reading in Ephesians today, Paul is encouraging everyone in the church, each and every person, to find ways to use their gifts and talents for the building and strengthening of the body of Christ. He knows that everyone has been given a call from God to live lives of purpose and meaning, lives of humility and gentleness, lives of patience and love, lives of interconnection and peace. And he brings this conversation up in Ephesians with intention. There is a reason that he's talking about all of these gifts in his letters. It seems that there are some in the early church facing some challenges. The church as a whole is going through some struggles as some people think that their lives and their efforts are better than what others had to offer. There's some divisions in the early church, some competition, this inability to value others for their inherent worth. But Ephesians celebrates that while we are called to be together as one body in Christ, we all have our own unique gifts and talents and callings to offer this common ministry. We get this litany of all these different roles that people are called to play, and this reminder that all are called to ministry and building up the body of Christ. Just as a physical human body has many parts, so does the body of Christ. Each part plays a role in the body. The body needs each and every part no matter what. And so we are reminded of ourselves that whatever role we have to play, it is an important one and it matters. You have something to share and something to offer that no one else does. One thing I want us all to remember from this study we're doing on Ephesians is that you are capable of doing far more than you know. Remember that line in Ephesians from last week? God is the one who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask and imagine. We get down on ourselves sometimes because we don't see ourselves the way God sees us. We get frustrated because maybe we can't do the same things that we once did, or maybe we don't have the right resources or training on our own. But when we open ourselves to the moving of the Spirit, when we tune our hearts to God, when we really believe that God can work through us, we sometimes get this most delightful surprise when God shows up in us and through us. In every season and stage in life, God can find a way to work through us. In every season and stage in life, God can delight and surprise us with what God will do. And here in the church, we can help nurture and encourage one another to keep at it. This is part of our kinship in Christ, that we journey together so that we can build one another up in love. That's why spiritual growth and self-exploration are part of our new mission statement. We know that Christ has gifted each of us. That is a fact. It is an already thing. You are gifted. But it does take time and discernment to discover our gifts 
and to explore our talents so that we can live more fully and deeply into the call Christ has given us. So this week, I'm going to invite you to explore your gifts and talents. And I've got some homework for you to work on, if you will. When you head out today, each of you is going to get this little bookmark. And I don't know if you can tell what's on it or not, but there is a little tiny mirror on here to remind you that you, in all your uniqueness, with all your gifts and talents, your particular perspective and insight and life experiences, all of this that makes you you, that is important. God has called you to be a saint for the work and ministry, for building up the body of Christ, for answering the call you have been given. And no matter what stage in life you are at, you are capable of far more than you could ask or imagine, because God is at work through you. So your homework. On this card, you have the first set of lines, my three gifts and talents. So I want you to spend some time thinking, really thinking about what your unique gifts and talents are. And then the second set of lines says three ways I can use my gifts for the body of Christ. And if you need more room, there's always room on the back, okay? So fill this out this week. Spend some time in discernment. Think about the ways that God can work through you. Think about the ways that you can not just support our ministry here at Zion, but ways that you can support the building of God's kingdom in the wider community with other organizations you volunteer with, with how you interact with your neighbors, with the love and support and care that you give to your family and friends. What can you do to create a more loving, just, peaceful world so that the light of Christ can shine through you. Spend some time reflecting and discerning. Right now, here at Zion, we are in the beginning stages of our strategic plan process, and so we are doing a lot of reflecting and discerning. We've got our mission and vision statements. We've got these amazing dreams about what God can do in our ministry, and now our strategic plan task force is starting to write out the roadmap for the next three to five years. It's been really exciting thinking about how we can make these dreams a reality, and I will admit, at some points, it has felt a little bit overwhelming. We have some big dreams for our ministry. We know God is calling us to serve and enrich our community, to provide opportunities for our neighbors to grow and learn and find refuge here at Zion. To make these visions and dreams a reality, though, we are going to need your help. We are going to need your prayers and your passions, your ideas and your imaginings, your time and your talents. And I promise you this truth, that God can accomplish abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine. You, you have been gifted by Christ with all this possibility, with your unique gifts and talents, and through them, God can do amazing things. Every day is an opportunity for us to grow and learn and explore and discover. As I watch this tiny human growing each and every day, I can't help but be amazed at what God can do, at the miracle that this life is that we have been given. 
So let's journey together to discover ways that we can put those gifts and talents to use in building up the body of Christ in love. May you discover, with the help of the Holy Spirit, your unique call. Amen. Friends, as we consider what it is that we can bring to God this day, whether our financial resources or the resources of our gifts and talents, I invite you to be in a spirit of discernment as you listen to God's call this day. Whatever measure of grace and giftedness you have been given, it is enough. From this measure, you are invited to share yourselves with God and with God's world. As we bring our offerings, I do want to remind you that our August Benevolence Offering goes to support God's Bounty Food Pantry that serves Wanamaker and the wider community in assisting those in our neighborhoods who are facing food insecurities. God's Bounty offers to them the food staples that they need to feed their families week in and week out, and so I hope you'll consider supporting that particular ministry. You can make your donations this morning by dropping them in the offering basket in the back or by donating online at zionuccindy.net slash donate, and you can also continue to mail in your checks as well. So friends, let us lift up our voices, singing together the doxology as we consider the gifts that we bring this day.
hands of Christ's peace and that grace of God's love go forth this day to use the gifts and talents that God has given you for the building up of the world. Go forth this day to love and serve the Lord. 